Clip Studio Paint on iPad is a super powerful and convenient drawing application. I've grown to love creating on my iPad for its ease of use. With the exception of the first tip, all of these are applicable on the iPad and desktop versions of Clip Studio Paint. These tips are aimed at beginners, but there's some fun things thrown in for intermediate users also. Let's get started. Tip number one, simple mode. Clip Studio Paint's a drawing tool on iPad as well as desktop, so natively, the desktop looking interface is the default. But if you're new to drawing on Clip Studio Paint on iPad, you may want to try Simple Mode. To access Simple Mode, select the Clip Studio Paint icon in the top left of the screen, and then select Switch to Simple Mode. Simple Mode uses a minimal interface mostly for quick and easy drawing and its limited layer features. It's a good starting point when getting used to the drawing style of the program. To exit simple mode and return to the default classic mode, select the ellipsis on the right and then select switch to studio mode. Tip number two, line stabilization. If you're a beginner and having some trouble with getting clean lines or digital drawing in general, Practicing your line confidence will go a long way. In the meantime, try adjusting your line stabilization. With your drawing pin selected, head to the Tool Property panel, and then increase the stabilization. This will create cleaner and smooth lines that reduce shakiness in its appearance. Tip number three, symmetrical ruler. If you're drawing a design element that requires a perfect symmetrical reflection, this ruler is for you. It has far more powerful uses than just that, but for working on concept art and model sheets, the symmetry ruler is a great tool to mirror your designs. Essentially, you start with drawing half of the design, deselect the ruler, and add variants. Let's give it a shot. Head to the rulers tab, which looks like a drafting triangle ruler. Then select the symmetrical ruler. This ruler requires a point to be created that will serve as the middle point that mirrors your reflection. Keeping this clean and straight is perfect for our use in this example. So if you have a keyboard connected to your iPad or on a desktop, simply hold the shift key to create a perfectly straight line. If you don't, like I don't, you can use an on-screen keyboard. Slide your finger from the edge towards the center and it will reveal the keyboard functions. Hold the shift key and then draw your line. Now that we have a midpoint created, start drawing wherever you want to mirror. For this example, I'll freehand a sword. As you can see, this particular ruler type is perfect for freehanding or drawing on top of a sketch. If you're working on designs or props, this is a great way to start. Perfect. So we freehanded the sword here using the symmetrical ruler. If you want to make an asymmetrical change, disable or toggle off the ruler in the layers palette. So head to your layers, select the ruler icon here, press and hold on the iPad, and you can just click show ruler. Now that it's gone, if you want to make an asymmetrical change just to one side, Now go forth and slay your dragons. Tip number four, transparent color. If you've tried to erase your drawing with a symmetrical ruler active, you'll realize that it does not erase on both sides. It's not mirrored. Since the ruler mirrors strokes, let's draw with transparency to have the same function as removing the lines on both sides. To do this, look at your active and background color choices and then select the transparent swatch beneath them. Now, you can remove lines as if it was an eraser. Then, switch back to your active drawing color to add in what you want to. Tip 
Tip number five, brightness to opacity. This one is for those who like to use a traditional to digital workflow. I will often snap a photo of my sketch on my iPad and then import it into Clip Studio Paint to edit. Import your scanned work, image from photo library or your photos, and then in this example I have here, I've got an ink sketch that I want to edit and color underneath. To do this, I want to remove the paper texture and its visual noise and make this a clean white background. So step one, head to the Select tab, then select Select Color Gamut. On the same layer as your imported image, make sure that you use these selectors to choose the paper color. You can edit the margin of color, which will increase or decrease the power of your selection. Uh, for here, I'll leave it at this 20 points. This will work just fine. And now this has made an active selection of everything I selected of this paper color. So we'll hit OK. And then you'll get a small window of options. I'll choose the sixth one. It looks like a small vanishing icon. This deletes everything that was the same color as my selection. Now I'll choose the first option to deselect. So you can adjust your levels to clean this up further if you choose. Uh, I'll be erasing this debris and redrawing a lot of this anyway. So we can just move on to the next step. I'll go to edit and then select convert brightness to opacity. What this will do is choose the bright white and make it transparent. So now on the layers area or a palette, if I make a layer underneath this scanned work or photo, I should be able to color underneath my artwork. Let's choose a color here, it's random. Yeah, perfect. So now you've separated and isolated your scanned inks and then you can add color underneath or a layer on top and make your edits and fixes. There you have it. These are five tips I wish I knew the first day I picked up Clip Studio Paint. Feel free to like this video and share these tips with others. Thanks for watching.